discussing the solution probabilities. So, we have seen how an a, a four operator the bidirectional um, forwarding and if else implication operator, uh, inside operator, and then uh, weighted distribution should be done uh, uh, in an uh, randomization. So, now let us look at on the implication and a bidirectional constraints, how it will be taken care. So, this is a simple implication operator example. So, I have an two variable, so x and an a y, uh, this is x with a bit and this is y with a bit and both are rand variable. 2 bit, so this value is goes 1 0 to 3 0 1 as we defined in this case also. I am putting a constraints, one is y is forwarding to 0 and another one is the implication operator, this is the bidirectional constraint, this is the, um, uh, so sorry, this is an implication constraint, uh, this is an bidirectional constraint. Let us look at on the implications one. So, I am taken 8 solution probabilities. The first one is 0, 0 as y is greater than 0, it fails to appear, so that the probability will be 0. Maybe it may be passing, but the first case is failed. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 and 1, 0 will not be implied. So, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 as it is fails to do this, fails to do this second constraint, so such that the probability will be 0 as discussed with respect to this, that is the by implications. So, <coughs> this case, the E case will be 1, but the Y will be 0, so such that it is also not appear. Only the possible case of constraints probabilities are so, 1 1, so which is not appear on this constraint, 1 2 not appear on this constraint, 1 3 not appear in this constraint, so that I have only a solution for this probability is 3, so this is 1 out of 3, this is 1 out of 3 and this is 1 out of 3, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 and x is, so y is greater than 0, this is the implication is the implication by direction, this is the by direction value. So, guiding distribution with a solve and a before. So, class with implication <coughs> solve and a before. So, I have 2 1 implication x is equal to 0 implied y is equal to 0. Solve x before y. So, this is the one another one constraints what I am saying. So, solve x before y constraints. So, I am taken 0, 0, this is a solution probability 1 out of 2, these 3 fail to solve it, right. So, 1, 0, so first I will solve for x and then for y, that is what we done till now, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, so that it is 1 out of 8 probabilities. So, if I take solve y before x constraints, so then I need to work out reversely, right. So, this is the one probability where 0 will comes first, so then y, so that it is not, it is failed to take up this implication, so that the whole probability is solution probability is 1 out of 8. This is 0, 0, this is also 1 out of 8. These 3 is failed as because this is appear in this condition, but here I will take 1 first, then this one, so that the solution probability is out of 4 is the 1 probability of solution. Similarly, this is 2, then 1, so the solution probability is 4 out of 1 these are the four possible cases of y. So, in that, so the possible solution is this one, this one and this one. This is whole 8, x is true for all 8 cases, so that it is goes for 1 out of 8. So, 
so controlling multiple constraint block is possible so in a system where log or in an a, a, a randomization at run time you can use the built in constraint mode this is the mode what you can specify it and you can select also that mode so which goes for a routine to turn constraints on and an a half between the on value and between the half well, on is a true value and half is an a false value so the on value will be specifies uh, uh, the appearance of this constraint parameter uh, which checks uh, uh, to take up uh, the true value or the false value so if it is passed then it will be considered as an a true if it is failed then it will be considered as an a zero value so now you can have a con single constraint also you can have a multiple constraints over here because all our works the multiple constraints in concurrent fashion as we discussed so in all these cases so here so uh, which makes us uh, to list out that uh, in a single constraint also you can control single constraints with uh, with the case of handle constraint this is a single defining a single constraint and then you can define a mode for these single constraints we are defining on and on and half value so if you want to use all the constraints then you omit this constraint all all constraints as an single constraint or you considering the whole constraint as an one object parameter so then you can go to handle it independently handle dot constraint mode so the constraint mode will be defining us how the constraints will be considered so these constraints will be very two types so which needs to be considered one is an a valid constraint and another one is an a non valid constraint the valid constraint is the one which takes up the constraint uh, which can be always looks at an a true value so that is a major thing to be think on at a run time how your constraints will becomes an a true in a multiple time uh, multiple solution uh, value so will be defining us so the constraint parameter so it can also be an a false so or may not be considered the true value if it's considered with a true value then it is an valid constraint if it is not considered with an a true value so uh, i'm not saying a false value not considered with an a true value so then it is called as an a non valid uh, cases so or non valid constraints the valid constraints are the one where the uh, where you looks for to create several constraint which ensures only the true value for your stimulus what you are generating the true value means corrected value correctness of your stimulus so all the responses are true only there is no errors which will be generated all the value which is generated from this constraint are true only or correct only so those type of constraints will be called as an a valid so the validity uh, or the valid constraints normally used uh, in your memory checkings or memory transactions once you are doing so to check out the right appearance and an a false appearance so normally in a caches we call it as an a right miss uh, read miss uh, right hit uh, hit uh, read hit etc 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 to check this read hit uh, hit and a miss values so in the memories so we will go and use this valid constraint so let us check out the right length with an valid constraint i'm checking a memory so with its size values uh, how much right length it can be used as so i am creating a class called as an a transaction a right transaction i am defining an a two uh, enumerated operators one as an a length and another one as an open the length will have a byte a word long word and an a quart 
word. So, enum will take these values, this length with an operation, read operation, write operation, read and write operation, interrupt operation. So, I will put in a constraint for this um, uh, validity, uh, valid constraint. I will say OPC whenever it is an a read write mode which implies only with an a long word. So, read write will be considered only when the length is long word else. So, it will be goes with any other mode. Let us check the constraints. So, so that so whenever the read comes, so it will take either a byte or a word or an a quad word. So, for write and interrupt, but whenever the read write mode comes, so it will take only an a long word. So, that is an a validity I am putting to this constraint. So, inline constraints. So, the inline constraints are the one. So, where so you will inline constraint are the one. So, which is considered to interact with each other uh, uh, where and all you are defining it. So, where and all you are expecting uh, the unexpected values to be there or where and all you are interacting with uh, uh, each other. So, there and all. So, these uh, values will be uh, uh, considered uh, to be uh, presented uh, uh, for those appearances or uh, those uh, values. So, that is where that that is the problem uh, uh, where your extra code will be enabled or or your values will be enabled or di disabled with respect to the validities which is presented or whenever you want you can enable it or whenever you want you can disable so your values to be there. So, similarly how you are considering the validity similarly your inline will make your values to be enabled or disabled. So, where it will be used? So, this will be used once you are checking for uh, uh, your uh, address buses uh, or a data buses um, uh, when it should be enabled, whenever it should be disabled either whenever reading a memory or writing a memory or reading from a processor or writing from a processor. So, with respect to that, so you can use this inline constraint to check that that uh, read address bus and a data bus. Additionally, constant adding and editing constraints to a class uh, could cause problems in a team of environment, so which goes on varying to those values. So, uh, normally whenever you are adding uh, to the existing one, uh, the extra constraints are created, so which creates uh, uh, an effect on the existing one which one you are added to it. So, we have a constraint mode, the constraint mode will be uh, making that us to enable or disable similarly how you are making valid or invalid. So, 0 is valid and uh, invalid and 1 is uh, valid. Similarly, so your constraint mode if you want to disable, so then you will make it as an a 0 if you want to make it as an enable, then you will make it as an one, uh, 1. So, whenever you are using a this constraint mode, so there should be an a conflict constraints which will be appear from the constraints to this disable constraint mode. So, this conflict will be normally generates an error. So, the said that while using a inline constraint, we need to take care of this disable values. So, all the disability for multiple values, you can use a concatenation uh, uh, similar to your system Verilog or Verilog, where you are using a concatenation symbol. So, so that can be with inside or without inside also. Normally, we look at on the concatenation or the value ranges concatenation inside the inside operator. So, so that so uh, which will makes the two constraint values or the range values to be appeared 
uh, within the inside uh, variable uh, uh, parameter. So, let us take this uh, statement which can be randomized. I am creating a class called Tasana transaction which is an a, a, a takes a two variable address and a data. So, this is my address bus, this is my data bus. So, both are having a size of 32 bits. The address bus and a data bus runs parallelly uh, so that the constraint applied to the address may not be appear at a data, the data constraint which is declared may not be appeared at an a address also. So, but so once the address is constrained data may or may not constrain, the data if it is constrained the address may or may not constrain. So, now here I am giving a constraint only for the address. So, now I am taking a inside operator with the address variable inside operator as you know it is a rand. So, address operator which goes from 0 to 100 on range and 1000 to 2000 value. So, I will call the transaction T. So, to define the object value that is the to define what are all the line values I am creating new transaction on that. So, I am defining the randomized variable t dot randomize. So, for this randomize I am putting the value. So, what to randomize? How to how it should have to take the randomized value? Address so I am declaring with 50 to an a 1500, 50 to an a 1500 it will take the values less than or equal to 50. So, that is 0 to 50 or it will be goes above 1500, 1500 to 2000 value. So, data I am limiting to an a 10. So, that that is not a constraint. So, such that it will be passed always. So, only the constraint is your address. So, such that all the randomization which is generated will be put on this that is 50 to 100 and 1000 to sorry uh, greater than or equal to 50 that is 50 to 100 and less than or equal to 1500, 1000 to 2500. So, now I will drive this bus data and address bus. So, now once it is driven, so the transaction happens. So, now I will force the address to specific the values. So, what are what what you want this is the inline. So, it is executed. So, now in line with that I am executing another one randomization, this randomization with address as 2000 and uh, address as a specific value as 2000 and data as an a 10 less than 10 sorry greater than 10. So, now I will drive the bus, now the bus will take this value, here the bus will take this value. These type of constraints what I am putting so in a mode will be called as an in line constraint. So, you can put so every time you can put a time period also to drive this. So, you can say drive for an a uh, 100 seconds, uh, drive for an a 1000 nanoseconds, etcetera, etcetera. So, now this drive will be appear this constraint drive, uh, this value which you join as a constraint will be appears only for this many nanoseconds. Here, unlimited. So, it will limits until unless this command will be appears. Once this command is appears, so then it will be de executed or uh, it will come out from so those values and takes the new values which is assigned to this also. Okay. So, you can do the uh, in uh, before and after delays also. So, you can do drive t after 1000 nanoseconds, this value will be assigned the randomized value for this buses after 1000 nanoseconds also. So, depending on how the your application you want so with respect to that you can use. So, the major use of this inline command is while checking your protocol. Uh, there is a major end. So, if you are working on uh, your USB protocol or if you are working on um, SPI, 
APB buses or uh, SPI protocols for serial to parallel interfaces or if you are working on uh, any other uh, protocols, uh, communication protocols. So, the, at that time these inline commands are very useful to use. Valid constraints normally used uh, in a memory uh, or in an somewhere else in an a ALU operation also uh, while checking the ALU operations. So, uh, in NOCs majorly we will do the NOC verification. So, only with respect to this inline uh, constraints than uh, those uh, constraints uh, valid. So, uh, the appearance uh, of that constraints will be different uh, um, from uh, this inline constraints to this uh, valid uh, constraint value. So, other than this, so uh, uh, these inline constraints, so are these things. So, we have uh, uh, number functions, random number functions. So, we have n number of random number functions which is uh, considered uh, also uh, which ranges uh, to an a uh, different uh, uh, values uh, which will be uh, taken um, uh, consideration for that also. Uh, that depends on how you, you will be uh, hard to satisfy uh, your values which will be considered. So, these functions uh, may not be uh, the same as what we are explained the operators till now. So, those are all the operators which is defined to take up uh, the functions um, which is definable in a different value. So, all the uh, these functions can be used through that operator. Uh, those operators can be used within this uh, function, but those operators cannot use these functions as an the whole uh, parameters. The vice versa is not possible. That is what the major things to be remembered. And all these functions are the distribution functions. So, uh, as we have an probability of distribution, so we have an a flat distribution, so which is goes with uh, uh, to define. Uh, your uh, range uh, uh, in the given uh, uh, values is the normalized uh, flat distribution values. So, normally which is here which is goes with an a 32 bit uh, random uh, values. So, and another one uh, which is defined between these ranges uh, also uh, and we need to think on. So, in this range what is the returnable values for this uh, flat distribution also. So, for that you need to define x is equal to f of y f of y x uh, is the major distribution which needs to be considered. Similarly, so we have an exponential distributions where you are defining x is equal to e to the power of y f of e to the power of y. So, where it will be looked either the positive exponential or less than a negative exponential or it can be goes with an a bell shape uh, 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 taking up the positive bell or a with an a negative bell. So, the distribution uh, will be explains as a normal distribution and an a Poisson's distribution. So, for that, so we can have an a, a, a non Poisson distribution also in a bell shaped curve. So, which is more complex uh, number generation uh, than uh, uh, these two uh, techniques, uh, which is makes the arguments uh, or uh, the x and y to be appeared on those uh, values. So, here so it is normally a bell of or poisons of x or poisons of y, x is equal to poisons of y or poisons of x and y. So, etcetera, etcetera. So, what are the things we need to remember here? So, one is if you are thinking on the flat distributions, we need to have only a one uh, or multi one one dependency multiple variable uh, distribution. So, if you are thinking on a exponential, so that uh, interdependency can be checked out with this uh, how an interdependency. 
independent variable will be varied. So, in a bell in in these type of variation, if you are thinking on a range of values uh, for different variables needs to be checked on uh, with the different uh, distributional values. So, then so you need to go for an embedded expression. So, that depends on how you want a test vector. So, your test vector should be an a, a given ranges. Um, so, then you use a flat distribution normal uh, appearances. So, if you are going with uh, the variation uh, appearance uh, let us say I have an a signal uh, I have an a, I want to check an a memory uh, in a random value storage for all its miss values then I will go with an exponential because so uh, one miss may not be appear in the second location the second location may be goes with an two or three values. So, I will think it will be it will be appears the miss values exponentially increasing or with an exponentially decreasing. So, so that so I will look uh, the whole distribution with an exponential value. So, the bell distribution normally uh, positively increasing decreasing or decreasing increasing. So, normally looks for your bus. So, so, so where uh, um, I will check uh, uh, the signal range the longest route or a shortest uh, route uh, if I route it for a uh, one uh, component to the another component with a longer value. So, then it is goes on decreasing once the repeater comes then it will goes on increasing similarly it will be uh, done with the negative uh, value distribution also. So, how <coughs> this the functions defined <coughs> dollar random flat distribution returning signed 32 bit random values. So, it is a normal distribution which is used what all till now we had used is a flat distribution which returns a 32 bit random. So, u random unsigned uh, 32 bit random value u stands for unsigned where and all you go with in system very locks. So, it is a flat distribution which returns 32 unsigned 32 bit random uh, values. So, u random range which is a flat distribution over a range of uh, uh, values uh, uh, from minimum to an a maximum low to an a high um, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, which is defined. So, the uh, uh, u random will takes this values to be returned uh, either signed or unsigned random and u random. The range will be goes to return these ranges. Uh, that is the difference between the u random random to an u random range. So I am not saying an average return here. So it's an signed returned values will be there. Maybe one, two, uh, one value here, one value here, there is something like that. Single value return it will be there. So similarly, we have an a, a distribution uniform. So, which distribute uh, which takes the distribution value uniformly same as 10 to 20 what we are given example. So, it will goes with 10 to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 up to an a 20 this is the flat distribution that is a uniform distribution distribution uniformly. So, uh, let us say 0 to 100 to an a, a 200. So, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150 the uniform distribution flat uniform uh, distributions which will be taken up. So, we have only one exponential distribution that is a decayed distribution. So, which goes always uh, with an a decaying its value. So, from higher values to an a lower values. So, that is a distribution exponentially which is appears. So, normally used in um, to check the memory hit ratios normally it should have to be decayed from one verification stage to the next verification stage. So, distribution normal and distribution poison are the two bell shaped distribution. So, normal will be used as the normal distribution the poisons will be used as the poisonal uh, values to distribute the values. So, these two are more complex distribution uh, normal and a poison. So, which is used limitedly also normally whenever you are going for NOC which will be used so normal and a poison uh, distributions. So, here so 
so u random range function takes two arguments that's what i told low value the g send and an high value whenever you want a range so then we have only one function that is an u random range so these are all single value single variable distribution this is a higher valuable uh, distribution so this is the one example for random range so i will assign a u random range dollar is a file function this is a file function so <coughs> dollar u random range so 3 comma 10 i will pick a value from this low value to this high value only in this range only in this range so a u random range 10 to 3 so i will again the same thing i will pick a value from 3 to u random range 5 so default i will pre assume whenever you say range as an 0 so such that it will be takes the value from 0 to 5 0 5 okay. so that's about something on the functions so so let us look at on how what are all the errors you will have experienced so once you are going for uh, this uh, uh, randomization process uh, common problems in a randomized fa fashions i am um, uh, taken up some may not be the this as per the twist peer i am taken up here so maybe goes with an uh, upper hand also to this so use signed variable with a care so signed variables cause randomization problem class sand weight so <coughs> so this is the one where you will look at on the pocket one length pocket two length which is 64 bit so total length so randomizing unsigned 32 bit variables so <coughs> i am taking the pocket one as an 32 bit value but i am assigning to an another one so that is a major difference the constraint itself will be fail to take up this because the pocket one length pocket two length this is a byte this is a byte so that will becomes an a, 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 a 16 bit but we are assigning to an a 64 value that's something error which is taken up randomizing unsigned 8 bit variables so rand bit 8 bit pocket length pocket one length and pocket two length it's an 8 bit wide but while i am assigning i am assigning a 9 bit sum so which may not be considered uh, to this length uh, uh, value so the second one there is a value changes so how you can check uh, this is a common problem in all the programming uh, cases so you you are not unable to recognize the particular sizes are the signed functions uh, with the case so that you can't able to measure it uh, the whole uh, range and the whole uh, variable declaration itself so that it, it will be goes on varies with respect to that also solver performance tips a wide expensive operators such as division multiplication and a modulus uh, uh, will be the three uh, expensive operators so division will be results with an a huge variable size you can't able to accommodate so the multiplication also so if you are doing 8 bit and 8 bit multiplication it will be results with an a uh, 16 bit product similarly a modulus is an nothing but an a division uh, parameter so with a power of 2 which is also results with an a huge results so if you want if you need to divide a or multiply a variable by a power of 2 use the right and a left shift operator that is a very good way uh, uh, you can think on that so because so you are making it shift and add method so that is a very good way you can limit your uh, appearances a modulus operation with a power of 0 1 2 can be replaced with a boolean and uh, uh, with a
which I mask because uh, so the boolean and is a simple single uh, operator which will be makes us uh, to increase or to execute in a limited uh, uh, simulation period so, so that it will be goes with that so the masking is all uh, masking is inside to this boolean operator so if you need to use one of these operators you may get a better performance if you can use a variable less than 32 bit wide value so that's the two common errors which is uh, listed out so let us go with the advanced randomization random control so introduction to rand case um, uh, you defined uh, everything so as i told in the initial uh, slides uh, or in the session one so so the random uh, rand function or randomize function cannot be limited to an one so it can be goes and varies with a, a different uh, values also so that so the rand case is the one case which is used uh, uh, for that to control your random variable um, which is normally used with an u random or may be or may not be also so rand case is a simple uh, case statement which uses its switching element randomly you can see there 1 8 1 there is no conflict between this one and uh, this one so, uh, priority will be taken the first one as this because that is the first option the second one so will be the second priority or the lowest priority so it will be considered as an uh, last case uh, statement so there is no default required here because in a generally design cases, we will tell it as an whenever you use a case as per the RTL guidelines, default is an mandatory. But once you are using a RAND case in an a test cases, uh, these are all the cases which is used in your test benches. So, what all we are defining from session 1 uh, or in system very log. So, all the test benches cases. So, so that I am not looking at these are all things in an a design cases, looking at as an a, a test bench cases. So, this will be the default is not required uh, to do that also. So, what are all the values you are assigned it will be checked and it will be comes out of that. So, let us say what it will be doing here is so the first whenever the rand case goes to an a 1. So, length u random range I am defining between 0 to 2. So, so that it will goes from 0, 1 or 2, 10 percent that is defining a 10 percent of the case statement. So, 8 is nothing but the 80 percent, the first 10 percent, next 80 percent, next 10 percent. So, that is between 3 to 5, 3, 4, 5. So, next one is 10 percent, you will go with an 0 to 6 to 7, the next percent is 10 to 7. That is, this is the first prioritized one, this is the last prioritized one. So, you can say prioritized or percentage one, the first 10 percent, then 80 percent, then the next 10 percent. So, if I say h length percentage display, then it will be takes up to the length value as an 0, 1 or 2 this is the first 10 percent will be displayed. So, equivalent constraint classes. So, constraint c I am just defining a length constraint distance with a 0 to 1 0, 3 to 5, 8 and 6 to 7 as an 1, 3 cases, 0 to 2 constraint for a distance as an 1, uh, length as an 1. So, then second case is an a 3 to 5 I am going, then it is an 80 percent, 6, 3, 6 to 7 I am going with an 1 percent. So, I am calling length distance length d. So, initial begin length d is new assert len d dot randomize, I am randomizing it with the len d. So, these are the values which can be chosen. Choose len 0 d, 0 d means the first case. So, len d dot len values, len values, the case switching should be done. Building a decision tree with a rand case, so you, you can have uh, a simple case, the normally the case will be used in the randomization creating an a decision trees. So, uh, you can have different decision trees to do that. 
So let us say so I have an initial begin rand case one write do one write one read do one read sequential read write sequential write sequential read write do sequential uh, read so that is the end case so level 2 task do one write rand case memory write wt do memory write io write do io write so, so i'm just doing uh, this is the one tree this is the one tree this is the task this which will be taken as an upper tree do one read so in that do one read will be defined like this do one write will be defined like this what i am doing this is the top tree i have do one write i will call this as one two three four so one two three four so what i am doing do one write that is the one under one i have again call this as an one 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 two one three i will call it as an one 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 two and one three again two two will have three i will call it as an two one two 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 three this is two one two two and two three right that is what the total this is all rand cases right i do not have a particular switching statement but i can switch through these statemental values ok so that is about the things So thank you.